Hello and welcome to module two, section D of the Better With Less course, this one about bedside. And I think bedside is the perfect place to start with our simplifying our daily lives because it's the first thing that we see when we wake up and the last thing we see before we go to bed. So those bookends make it a really important place to tackle and make sure it's both organized and calming. Now everyone's bedside area might look a little different. For many, it might be a nightstand or another similar type of furniture. But whatever the type, we're going to start today's lesson by doing a quick inventory of what the situation is at our bedside, as well as prioritizing the items that are most purposeful and making some swaps or looking for alternatives to help with the parts that maybe aren't as essential. Let's dive in. All right, let's get started with the bedside section of the course. And it's important to reflect about what your situation is in your space, since everyone's bedside might look a little different. The first step we must take is to complete a bedside inventory. In this situation, you want to ask yourself, what are your evening essentials? Obviously, this is going to vary for us. Let's say you do like to read before bed. It's probably essential to you to keep a light there or a lamp that can help you read, as well as maybe the current book you're reading might be what the situation is. I know in my own situation on my nightstand, I keep a white noise machine, I keep a glass of water, and I also put my sleep mask there before I use it that evening. Those items are all essential to me because I use them every single night to be able to sleep better. So figure out what is truly essential to you in this area and Think about where you keep these different evening essentials. For many, it might be a nightstand. If you don't have a nightstand, it could be a dresser or other piece of furniture in your bedroom. It could be a chair or stool that you're using to set things on. You might have that in your room, as well as it could even be just on the floor or if you've got one of those bedside caddies that attach to the bed. Wherever you keep these items, that's where we're looking today for these essentials. Go through the inventory, see what you've got. Next, let's prioritize purpose. Ideally, every item that you have at your bedside has a clear purpose. This space, ideally, is calming and does not have excess. Once again, it's important to ask ourselves, what are the essentials and what is non-essential? As well as, what are the essentials for my nightstand or for my bedside versus other parts of the room? Certain items might be a bedroom essential, but it doesn't mean they have to be right next to us on the nightstand. To give an example, an alarm clock is an essential to me. However, I don't keep it on my nightstand. I keep it on the other side of the room on a dresser. This opens up space on my own nightstand as well as prevents me from hitting the snooze button and going back to sleep. So it's a way that I have opened up that space without needing to get rid of all these other items. After you have figured out your essentials for your bedside area, let's remove those non-essential items or those that don't have a clear purpose. You can either declutter them or move them somewhere else. Another important layer to this lesson is wanting to improve sleep. Now, hopefully you do feel like you're getting enough sleep or high quality sleep, but unfortunately, many of us do struggle with certain sleeping challenges. Fortunately, one of the best ways that we can improve our sleep actually comes from some of the items that we keep or move away from our bedside area. One common example is where you store your phone. Many people do use their phone for an alarm clock or keep it in the bedroom. However, I would recommend not having it directly next to your bedside area. Number one, it's not ideal to be looking at our screen right before we go to bed, and that can interfere with our sleep quality. But also, there have been some studies that show that if you keep your phone too close to your head, it can interfere with your sleep as well with some of the brain waves, etc. So I'd recommend if you are wishing to continue storing your phone in your bedroom, maybe try to put it on the other side of the room to give a little space there and remove that temptation from waking up or scrolling before you go to bed. If you are someone who has a lot of thoughts on your mind, maybe consider keeping a journal. This could be a small journal you keep by your bedside and you could either write down what's on your mind, 
You could even do a dream journal. That's something that a lot of people find value in. Or you could use it to practice gratitude. Write down three things you're grateful for before you go to bed or when you start your day even. It also can be helpful to remove everyday carry items or any work-related items. Your everyday carry items will look into in an upcoming section of module two, but that includes things like your wallet, your phone. Ideally, we want to keep items in our bedrooms that promote relaxation and are not necessarily for work or for any events that cause stress. So it could be advantageous to remove those items or move them further away from your bedside area. Finally, ideally limit the items on surfaces to those that have to be there. This will also give you some extra peace of mind and give a much cleaner look to the space. Finally, I did want to offer some alternatives to nightstands. I think nightstands can be great, but I do acknowledge that sometimes they can be a clutter trap. And I have seen certain nightstands that really pack a lot of stuff, especially if there's multiple drawers that are very spacious. So if you feel like your nightstand is continually becoming a clutter trap, you could look towards a different option. One example of a very minimal approach for a nightstand is a floating shelf. They're fairly easy to install and you could set your essential items there, but then there wouldn't be any storage space within that. You could consider a bedside caddy if you wanted to get rid of that piece of furniture altogether. There are several versions available online as well as at home related stores and they contain several pockets and attached to the side of your bed so you can store some of your essential items there if you've got them without needing to depend on other furniture. You could consider doing a smaller piece of furniture for a nightstand or even a stool like you can see here in this sample picture. And you might just ask yourself, is something needed? I know for myself, I do need something there, at the very least for my water, my eye mask, and my white noise machine, which are next to the bed. But if you personally don't need anything there, you could consider switching things up. Of course, that doesn't mean it's required. Just decide what works best for you so this is an intentional path for yourself. That wraps up this lesson, but you do have some homework. This will help you take action on your bedside area and can be found in the download section. Keep up the great work and I'll see you in the next section.